sometimes I think I'm dreaming, but I realize I'm not after I look around me and I'm surrounded by boxes and uh, orders. But it's really an honor uh, to be chosen four years in a row. It's a lot of requirements as far as customer service because when you're on that list, they really expect you to deliver. So I feel like this year we really gave it a, a lot. I mean, I had a customized box, had the box um, specially printed for Foot Nanny, the home line. I had, we put ribbons on the boxes. We slid plastic sleeves on the boxes because, you know, when you're shipping something online to someone um, from an online order to their home, you want to make sure even though it may not be snowing or raining where I am, it may be snowing or raining where they are. So I really put a lot of thought into um, the packaging as far as arriving to the front door. And let's just say it's sitting there and it, the box outside gets wet. I want to be able to rest to know that my customer's box inside is protected by all means. And I've learned that by trial and error. You know, customers, they give you feedback and my whole, entire brand has been built off of feedback, so I really listen well. Well, since then, um, I just recently landed my second Bed Bath & Beyond store. Um, the first one was in Brookfield, Wisconsin, and the second one is in Madison, Wisconsin. And I'm proud to see how it's unveiling, and we're just unrolling, um, praying, one store at a time. And it gives me time to understand more about the Bed Bath & Beyond customer, you know, in store. I'm already familiar with them .com wise because it's been on their .com for a year. So the store is just another avenue of demand that's being met from the Foot Nanny customers. They want it to, they want to get in the car and go to the store and they want to pick it up like right then. They don't want to wait. And I, and I listen to feedback. We've also developed some really great digital partners. Um, the partnerships that we have now online that retail Foot Nanny products, their customer is very similar to the Foot Nanny customer. And I know that because based on my very first tweet endorsement that I got in 2012 from um, Oprah by doing a pedicure on her, that tweet gave me so much feedback and no one has ever saw those emails. I saw them. Oh, oh, I'm the only one that saw it. And, when I saw the emails, the feedback was, wow, this is so necessary. You know, my mom's diabetic, my father's diabetic. Oh, my God, we need this. How can I feel like that? So I had to come up with a way for a person to be able to take care of their feet at home as well as in a salon setting. And I think that's what makes me a little different than most brands is because I d decided to go after the consumer first and then the professionals second. I am a professional nail technician licensed, so I held it down. That I held down that part. But as far as reaching the customer and understanding them and not taking them away from getting a professional service, I had to really give it a lot of thought. I wanted the consumer to be able to take care of their feet at home in between their pedicure as well as if they don't even get pedicures, some people are very ticklish or very embarrassed about their feet. So at home care is very necessary. And I knew that from the feedback and from the experience I also have had throughout the years of uh, providing professional pedicures to customers. Well, I know my, my um, age bracket as far as my, um, the age of my consumer and the, 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 uh, the diversity of my consumers, I know what that is. So I was really looking for those brands who were more grassroots as I am because I, I call all that when you're listening to your customer, when you're reading the emails and determining your brand by the feedback, I look at that as grassroots marketing. So I knew of some brands, several, that had that same grassroots marketing approach to their customer and they actually took care of their customer and respected their customer's purchase. And so I sought after those, those brands. First of all, men are very loyal when it comes to getting service, meaning haircuts, grooming, shopping, the clothes, they're pretty much, you all are creatures of habit, right? And I grew up in a house full of men, so I was surrounded by my three brothers, my father, and they were pretty grounded on what they believed and what they know. And so 
I decided to change the game a little bit with my brand. I noticed that I would uh, have a sock that may have been a white cotton sock, and then I offer a gray cotton sock because I thought, well, if it's a man ordering, he might want a choice of socks. So a white sock, the white cotton sock, it's a unisex sock, and I figured, well, I'll come up with a, a gray and we'll see. Well, I started seeing a lot of movement with a white and a gray. And a white. I said, I need to go deeper into this. Let me call one of my jars. Let me come up with a product for men. Instead of it all being just the natural, you know, eucalyptus, lemon, pumpkin, let me call one man and just go after a true man, that man cave man. And so I, I, I named it, uh, it's an unscented. It's, it's exactly like the unscented uh, foot nanny foot cream. But I put that word man on as a, as a let's just say, a marketing radar. And so what I noticed then was um, the woman would order, say, a cotton candy or eucalyptus or a rose for her that was clearly uh, female when you go into the florals. And then I would see foot nanny man. And I was, I'm really happy because that told me, yes, I was right. Couples do shop together. The woman will look out for the man. Now at holidays, the, the, the man will shop for the woman. And I notice how they shop and it's from him and it's going to him, but it's a female's um, package that he ordered. So I, I think that I really um, use my male products, my man line, as my radar to understand how deep did the men really take care of their feet. And I know men love taking care of their feet, but they're more groomed with their feet than uh, women. Yeah. Um, I had to come up with a way for the consumer to hear my voice or to, to take care of their feet the way I want them to without me being there. And so when I paired um, the Foot Nanny Rescue Buffer, this is the one of them, the Foot Nanny Rescue Buffer. When I paired it with a pair of uh, Foot Nanny cotton socks and a jar of foot cream, it, it became a kit. And so now it's like a, the one, two, three process. Eat three steps to smoothness. So you buff your feet with the Foot Nanny Dry Buffer, you cleanse your feet, then you apply the Foot Nanny foot cream, and then you slide on your sock. The sock at the end of the treatment is merely to help that consumer understand how important it is to put your socks on and let that foot cream soak in or the balm, whichever they're applying. You want to make sure they they take care of their feet right. So I figured, well, if I tell them to put the sock on, this will make them do it. Even though it can be used without a sock, I want to make sure my consumer gets the full benefit of the foot cream. So I decided to put the socks with it. At first, I would say, use your favorite socks at home. But then when I paired it with a pair of cotton socks, 100% cotton socks, it made no, it was a no-brainer. I mean, and now it, it makes sense when I see them order a buffer, a sock, and a cream. Again, my heart goes, oh, they're listening. They're, I'm guiding them. It's going right. And so it, it, it makes it very easy to sell in-store as well that way. I would love to be rolling out more Bed Bath Beyond stores. It's a wonderful in-store platform for Foot Nanny brand, and I've really focused on that for a long time. Um, we also would be doing more in-store demonstrations because that's one thing that uh, I always wanted to do was do in-store demos. And so, like now, I have someone there today in uh, Brookfield, and she's doing in-store demos as I'm speaking now. And, and she's talking to the customer a little bit about the product and giving them a little background on what's in it, how it works. And she's definitely speaking from experience because I make sure whoever is going to do a demo or talk about the product, they get a sample of product from me so that they'll understand. So that's one thing. Another thing is we want to... Uh, partner a little deeper with our di digital partners and get a little bit more involved with their Facebook lives, with their Instagram lives, with their um, digital social media platforms, you know. And uh, I think it's a wonderful way to stay connected to the customers and, and keep them happy and, and get some natural feedback from them. I think that's pretty much the route that I'm taking and the direction I'm focused on. Definitely more grassroots marketing. Uh, this is going to be a very, uh, a lot of changes are happening in the world. And so this is a time that people really uh, need more pampering at home, more um, stress relief, 
Uh, they want to feel good when they wake up and when they go to bed. And I just think that I've nailed it with Foot Nanny, and it's a brand that's scalable, and it's um, necessary, and it speaks love when you say Foot Nanny. It's just happy. So we just – and I – I have another brand, a part of the brand. I'm bringing in more family, so we have Foot Nanny family. Uh, families seem to want to buy one jar and let the whole family, you know, use it. So we have a bigger jar, and it has a pump uh, involved in it, and that's for everybody. So because when you get everybody involved, you need a pump, and I think that's pretty much the direction I'm going. And just create things that's necessary. I do have, a, I will say this, there's a vitamin C line coming out in February, and that's going to be really nice because vitamin C is amazing for the skin. We're going to do the Foot Nanny shower gel, the hand and body lotion, and the hand soap, along with a foot cream for the vitamin C line. So that's something I'm really excited about.